Happy Monday afternoon to you and happy Halloween Eve. I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shea. We're a day away from Halloween and about a month away from the end of our hurricane season. And so far this season, none of those systems have come our way here in Houston or the rest of Southeast Texas. So that is a great thing. We just got to get through about one more month and hopefully we can do that. And then we can say we were spared from being hit and devastated by one of these tropical storms or hurricanes for yet another season. That is something to be thankful for. As far as today, we are just very close to the end of October. Like I said, we've got one more month left in our hurricane season. Of course, typically we don't have that much action on the tail end of hurricane season, but it is still possible. So that's why we will continue to do these updates every afternoon all the way through the end of November because we could still have some systems developing and that's exactly what is going on right now. We do have an area of potential development that we are closely monitoring. This is in the Eastern Caribbean. This is right around Puerto Rico and south of Puerto Rico and north of the Venezuela area. So this is in the Eastern Caribbean. You can see fairly disorganized showers and storms. No well defined center of circulation here just yet but we are monitoring this as it drifts west. It is actually expected to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone. In fact, the chance for that over the next several days has increased to 60%. So for the next 48 hours, the next day or two, only a low chance that that would happen. But over the next week, there's a medium 60% chance that we could have another tropical depression, another tropical storm, or possibly even another hurricane on our hands. And this would actually be in the Caribbean. So that gets us a little bit more concerned because of course systems in the Caribbean could continue tracking west like this one is expected to. And it could make that shift northwest and push into the Gulf of Mexico and that means it could possibly be a problem for us. So we are not totally out of the woods yet because we've got to watch this system pretty closely. It is forecast for the next several days or so to drift basically west. And if it continued moving west, it would push into Central America. However, this area that we're watching is kind of wide because there is still some uncertainty. And notice there is a slim chance that it could track a little bit more to the northwest and that would take it into the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So we'll have to monitor this possible development area very closely. We also have another area we're watching, this one in the southwestern Atlantic. You can see where the yellow X is located there. Now this one only has a pretty small window to develop, and overall it looks like that chance for this one developing into a tropical system is quickly diminishing, decreasing. Only a 10% chance that we would have a tropical depression or tropical storm with this one. General movement is expected to be to the northwest, but the models are indicating that it likely will not survive for too much longer. It's going to move into an environment where it's going to be a lot harder for it to develop over the next few days. So if we don't get anything in the next day or two, the chances are very slim that that one will develop into anything too concerning. So good news there. Let's hop over to the Eastern Pacific and we have another tropical storm here that has developed. The Eastern Pacific has been super active recently. Of course, we had that one system that blew up from a tropical storm all the way to a category five hurricane. Thank goodness that is gone. But now we have tropical storm Pilar and this one is off to the south and west of El Salvador. You can see San Salvador there, Guatemala City, and it is pushing closer to Central America at this point. So over the next few days, it is expected to get close to that western coast of Central America, close to El Salvador for Tuesday and Wednesday. And that means the threat for some strong wind and some heavy rain. It is expected to get a little bit stronger longer as well. Currently, maximum sustained winds for Tropical Storm Pilar around 50 miles per hour. It is currently moving to the east northeast around five miles per hour with pressure at 1000 millibars. So it is going to have the potential to bring several inches of rain to portions of Central America, mainly right around El Salvador. And then it's actually going to switch direction. So it's kind of moving east, east, northeast now. But by Thursday, Friday and Saturday, it's going to turn back around to the west and start to move away from Central America. And those effects and impacts from Pilar will start to go away at that time. But for the next few days, 
there's a potential there for possibly several inches of rain for parts of Central America that could lead to some flooding and maybe some mudslides. So something for those folks to be concerned about with Pilar. For the Atlantic Basin, the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean, the Atlantic, we've already been through the majority of our names for this season. We've still got Vince and Whitney on the list and we could have at least one of those if not both over the next week. Only a low chance for that system in the southwestern Atlantic to develop, but the system that we're watching in the eastern Caribbean does have a 60% chance for development. So there is a decent shot. We could have Vincent, maybe Tropical Storm Vincent over the next couple of days or over the next week. So we'll keep you posted. We've already had 20 of those storms that have been named so far this season. Six hurricanes, three major hurricanes. So it's already been a very busy above normal season for the number of named storms and with the water remaining as warm as it is out there it is not going to take much to get some additional development if we start to see an area of low pressure forming there's the potential that it could quickly start to strengthen because that warm water of course acts as fuel for these systems and we've got those water temps still not far from 90 degrees for a big chunk of the Gulf of Mexico so even as we're a day or two away from November water temps are still super hot and steamy out there and that means favorable conditions for these tropical cyclones to keep on going we've got temperatures for the water in the Atlantic Caribbean in the 80s to low 90s so that is why we're saying it may be quiet, but don't let your guard down because there's still the shot that we could have some tropical development. Of course, we're watching it closely. If we see anything brewing, we'll let you know. Of course, we are keeping a close eye on that potential disturbance in the Eastern Caribbean that could turn into a tropical system. And if that blossoms and heads in our direction, of course, we'll be tracking it and you will be the first to know. Of course, you can always get more tropical updates, tropical information by downloading our Fox 26 weather app. Just head to the app store, search for Fox 26, and you can grab that Fox 26 weather app on your phone. Of course, if you have an iPhone, you can go to the Apple store. If you've got the Android phone, you can head to the store to get that app there as well. So certainly make sure to download that if you haven't already. All of the latest weather info right at your fingertips, no matter what part of town you're located in. And of course, you can grab your local weather as well. Well, that will do it for your update for today. For this Monday, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramisha Shade. Enjoy the rest of your day.